psalmist says, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How wonderful it is to be in God's house again to worship our God on this Trinity Sunday as we worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Phil Venetian, living in St. Peter, Minnesota, and I serve our Wisconsin Synod as a Christian living counselor. Uh, advising congregations and individuals in their lives of Christian stewardship. It is my pleasure to share the Word of God with you on this Trinity Sunday. For our worship service, it will be an abbreviated worship service. The uh, service details will be on the screen and also available in your uh, hymnal who follows service of the Word for our worship on uh, page 38 in the front of your hymnals. Our hymns, verses will be sung by Rhonda this morning. Uh, we will speak the song responsibly when that comes in our uh, appropriate time in our worship. And for your offerings, there is an offering plate on the table at the rear of our worship assembly where you can uh, give your thank offering to the Lord. Our worship begins today by singing hymn number 195 from verses 1 and 4 will be sung by Run in 195 stanzas 1 and 4. <laughs>
strengthening and renewing all creation by your eternal spirit and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. In mercy, cleanse our hearts and lips that, free from doubt and fear, we may ever worship you, one true immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning, now and forever. our likeness, 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that crawls on the earth. God created the man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. God said, Look, I have given you every plant that produces seed on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that bears fruit that produces seed. It will be your food. To every animal of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Chapter 2. The heavens and the earth were finished along with everything in them. On the seventh day, God had finished his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and set it apart as holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creation that he had done. Here ends our first lesson of Scripture. We join with me then in the singing of our song for our worship, Psalm 150, which you will find on the screen also on page 122 in your hymnals, we will speak this song responsibly this morning, joining together in the refrain at the beginning, middles, and end, and also joining together in the glory be to the Father. I will read the first line of the song if you would respond with the second line of each verse. We start with the refrain. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and honor. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strength and Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the sound of cymbals. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our second lesson for our worship today will also be our sermon message and text from the Apostle Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. We will read that at the beginning of the sermon. We will move on then with the reading of the gospel lesson for our worship today, if you would stand in honor to the words of our Savior. The Holy Gospel for this Trinity Sunday is recorded in the 28th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, reading verses 16 to 20. As Jesus commissions his disciples and all Christians to share the news that he is the Savior, he also instructs us to baptize in the name of that triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he gives us the promise that he is with us always. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some hesitated because they were uncertain. Jesus approached and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples from all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and by teaching them to keep all the instructions I have given you, and surely I am with you always until the end of the age. This is the Gospel of our Lord. And you may be 
seated. Our hymn of the day is hymn 194. We listen to stanzas 1 to 3, sung by Rhonda. Yeah, 
abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit. There are many people in the world who do not know the gods or idols whom they worship very well. Either they worship a concoction of some author through some writings of the book as their god, or they worship a stone or a wood idol as their god, but they really don't know a lot of the god who they worship. Thank the Lord that we do know the God whom we worship. We know Him because He has revealed Himself clearly to us in the Holy Scriptures. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons, yet one God. Now mathematically and logically, we can't figure this out with our human minds. But still we believe it. And we will confess it in a moment through the words of the Athanasian Creed. Because God's Word has truly and correctly revealed Himself that way to us. But we also know and understand our God from how He has worked His saving work in our lives. And so we worship Him as the only genuine, true, and living God. The God who has saved us. You know the God who you worship as we Examine the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of God left His heavenly throne and for a time set aside His glory as God to serve as our Savior and as our servant. He made Himself nothing as the Apostle Paul writes to the Philippians. He became our servant as He took on human flesh and blood, being born of the Virgin Mary, as we confess in the Apostles' Creed. He did that so He could serve as our perfect, sinless substitute, placing Himself under His Heavenly Father's laws and commands to keep them perfectly in our place, because we could not, because of sin. Yes, as the Apostle Paul writes, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. You know the everlasting and immeasurable grace of Jesus Christ, that he became the ransom payment for our sins by his death on the cross. As we confess in his grace, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He became the sacrifice for our sins. And you know the powerful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that three days later, He raised His body to life again, to prove that our sins are forgiven, that we have peace with the Father in heaven, and that we have the inheritance of eternal life. And you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that has blessed you, because He has ascended into heaven and He rules all, over all things for your benefit and for your blessing. Every time that you offer a prayer to the Heavenly Father, you have experienced the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ because He intercedes to the Heavenly Father with your prayers in your behalf so that they are heard and answered. You know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ every time you have an opportunity to tell other people about Jesus, that He's the only Savior who grants eternal life in heaven. We are ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ, as we heard in our Gospel lesson a moment ago. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know the God who you worship, because you have been blessed with the undeserved grace and favor of Jesus Christ. And you will know that grace and its blessing when He returns on the last day to judge you in mercy because of your trust in Him as your Savior as He brings you to the joys of life everlasting. Do you know the God whom you worship? Yes, you do. Because you have experienced God, Jesus' saving grace in your life. At the beginning of each worship service, we have the invitation 
We invite God to be with us as we worship Him. And we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But do you know God the Father, who we worship? Some people may think of God the Father as that distant person who is way up in heaven and only shows his anger against sin. But you know God the Father because you have experienced his faithful love in your life. As the Apostle Paul writes, the love of God. You have known the love of God the Father because as we confess at the beginning of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. He made you. He created you. Giving you life. As the psalmist writes, he knit you together in your mother's womb. Every time you have the ability to see and walk and run and taste and feel and think, you are experiencing the faithful love of God the Father who created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And it is God the Father who placed you in His creation, earth, so that you may know and see its beauties. And He blessed you with the resources of His creation. But you know the love of God the Father best from his love to sinners. The Lord says, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that they turn from their way and live. Paul writes that God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And that truth is that Jesus Christ alone is the Savior from sin, death, and hell. God's creation was perfect as we heard in our first lesson from Scripture when God said it was very good. That means perfect. The Hebrew word tov means perfect. And sin ruined that perfect creation. And God being a holy and perfect God had to curse sin with death. But in His abiding, everlasting love, God found a cure and a solution for the curse of sin and death. And the solution is to give up His only Son, to be the Redeemer of a world of sin and sinners. God made Him, Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us on the cross, so that in Him we might become the righteousness or the perfection of God. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his own son Isaac in love. God demonstrated everlasting and abiding love in carrying out the gift and sacrifice of his only son Jesus so that he might have forgiveness and eternal life. You know the God when you worship God the Father because you continue to experience his abiding love in the fact that He provides for you each and every day and He protects you. The very fact that you have food on your plate today, that you are wearing clothes for your body, that you have shelter from storms, gives evidence of God the Father's abiding love in providing for you each and every day. The fact that you are protected from evil during life and that the Lord, as He promises, will deliver you from all evil when He brings you to the perfection of heaven where there is no evil, shows you of God the Father's abiding love. Yes, you know the God whom you worship because you have experienced the faithful love of God the Father. Many times Christians will express this question to their pastor, perhaps you've said it to your pastor and yourself, Pastor, where would we be without our Christian faith? How true that is. In times of struggle and trial, where would we be without our faith in Christ Jesus? And without the work of God the Holy Spirit, you would not have the gift of trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know the God whom you worship because you have experienced the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit in your heart through the gift of faith. That fellowship
fellowship began when the Holy Spirit created faith in your heart for many of you in the sacrament of holy baptism, where through the power of God's word, with the washing of water, you were given a simple faith that Jesus Christ saves. And with that faith, the blessings of forgiveness and were made an heir of an eternal life in heaven. But the blessing of the fellowship and partnership of the Holy Spirit continues as you read, hear, and study God's Word as you are doing in this hour of worship. The Holy Spirit has His partnership and fellowship in your heart of faith, strengthening that faith with the promises of God's Word. He continues His fellowship every time you receive the sacrament of Holy Communion so that you have the pledge of God's forgiveness and where there's forgiveness in the body and blood of Jesus in with the bread and wine there is also eternal life. But you have the continuing partnership and fellowship of the Holy Spirit in the difficult challenges of life. Every time that you face a difficult decision in life or face a strong temptation, the Holy Spirit is there as Jesus identifies him, the Counselor and the Comforter. Through the Word of God, he counsels your mind and heart to walk in the way of the Lord when you face difficult decisions through the guidance of God's Word. And when we face the difficult time of losing a loved one to death or a close friend, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you with the promises of eternal life through Jesus Christ and the anticipation of a sweet reunion with our loved ones through Christ Jesus. And when we feel isolated or alone at times of life, the Holy Spirit is there with His blessing of fellowship to give us the promises that the Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as Jesus promised in our gospel lesson, I am with you always to the very end of the age. You know the God whom you worship because you have the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing what is to come our eternal life in heaven through the gift of faith that he gives in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know the God whom you worship? Yes, you do. Because he has revealed himself clearly in the Holy Bible. He is three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet one God. You know the God whom you worship because you have experienced his saving work in his life. So who is the God you worship? He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons, yet one God. And why do you worship this God? Because you have experienced the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have experienced the faithful love of God the Father. And you have experienced the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit in your heart. And so as you continue on in life and walk in the way of the Lord, your God, receive the blessing of your triune God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Please say it. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated for our confession through the words of the Athanasian Creed. You may also find this on page 132 and 133 in the fronts of your hymnals. We'll join and confess the words of the Athanasian Creed. This is common on Trinity Sunday as it focuses on the work of our triune God. We confess, whoever wishes to be saved must, above all else, hold to the true Christian faith. Whoever does not keep this faith pure in all points will certainly perish forever. Now this is the true Christian faith. We worship one God in three persons.
persons, and three persons in one God, without mixing the persons or dividing the divine being. For in each person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is distinct. But the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, and co-eternal in majesty. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father is infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father is eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. Yet they are not three who are eternal, but there is one who is eternal. Just as they are not three who are uncreated, nor three who are infinite, but there is one who is uncreated, and one who is infinite. In the same way the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit is almighty. Yet there are not three who are almighty, but there is one who is almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. Yet they are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Yet they are not three lords, but one Lord. For just as the Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually to be God and Lord, so the true Christian faith forbids us to speak of three gods or three lords. The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten of anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but is begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And within this Trinity, None comes before or after, none is greater or inferior. But all three persons are co-equal and co-eternal, so that in every way, as stated before, all three persons are to be worshipped as one God, and one God worshipped as three persons. Whoever wishes to be saved must have this conviction. normally bring our offerings to the Lord. Uh, at the conclusion of the service, there is an offering plate where you can give your thank offering to the Lord. Please stand for prayer. This morning in our special prayers, we offer a prayer of the Lord's comfort for the family of Nikki Dummer, the daughter of Dwayne and Carol Flygar. Uh, she was killed unexpectedly in a motorcycle accident last evening. Her husband was transported to uh, the medical center in Minneapolis. We offer a prayer of comfort for the Flygar and the Dummer, Dummer family. Gracious Father, in your wisdom, you have committed your servants, Nikki and her husband, to be injured and killed in an accident. While we do not fully understand your purpose in allowing us to take place, we are assured by your word that in all things you are for the good of your children. For God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you bless our fellow sister in the faith, Nikki, now fallen asleep. Thank you, especially for having brought her to the knowledge of your son, Jesus. We pray that you would comfort her family and all who mourn her death with your precious promises. Cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest and at last, together with us all, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. We thank you for sparing the life of her husband. Pray that you would permit him to recover from his injuries. Grant him patience and faith that humbly and thankfully submits to your will and direction each day for the sake of Jesus our Savior. Dear Lord, 
teach us to number our days of life, that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved to Jesus, our risen and ever living Lord. We also offer a prayer of thanksgiving that the Lord has granted successful surgery to Jeff Momo Majeski. May God, giver of life, health, safety, and strength, we praise you for having granted Jeff recovery from his surgery. May he now daily remember your great goodness, that he may serve you with a life that reflects genuine thankfulness for all your blessings. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we offer the prayer for our triune God. Triune God, you are the one eternal God whose name we praise forever. We could not have known you, our only Savior, if you had not revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Spirit, three persons yet one God. Our Father, whatever is good in us, whatever good things we have, and whatever good we do, comes from you alone. In you we live, move, and have our being. Open our eyes to see the gifts you shower on us daily, purely out of your own fatherly love and care. Lord Jesus, you came into our world to make the Father known to us. You joined yourself to us by taking on our humanity. You brought us back to God by shedding your blood. In love, you walked the way of suffering and bore alone the wrath of God, the wrath that we by our sins deserve. Help us believe that all you did, all you suffered, and all you endured, you did for us, to rescue us and set us free. In the bright new hope of your resurrection, teach us to offer our lives each day in praise to God and in love to our neighbor. Holy Spirit, you have opened our eyes to the bright light of your word. You have burst through our deafness with the clear sound of your voice in the scriptures. You have breathed into us a new life of faith by the power of the gospel. Through word and sacrament, help us grow in understanding the breadth and depth and height of the love of God. Make us firm in our resolve to do battle with our sin. In every weakness be our strength, that we may show ourselves to be God's true children. Holy Spirit, you are the God of glory, the God of grace, the God of every comfort. From you and through you and to you are all things. We rejoice to call you Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and so to praise your holy name forever. Amen. And we join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
concluding prayer and blessing. We pray. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you his peace.